Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Yoon. Um, I'm teaching computer science uh, at a small college, uh, Trinity College uh, in Hartford, Connecticut. And I'm serving um, a local church um, here at Trinity and also uh, Boston Church as well. About 2,000 years ago in the land of Israel, an innocent man was brutally executed on a cross by crucifixion. His execution was something extraordinary. Uh, it was about noon in the afternoon, but the sun lost its light and darkness covered the entire land. When he died on that cross, there was a violent earthquake, the rocks split and tombs broke open. But that was not the most extraordinary thing about his death. The most extraordinary thing about his death was what he said right before he took his last breath. He said, it is finished. When he said this, no one knew the statement he made would change everything forever, including your life and my life. But what did he mean by that? What did he mean by what he said? It is finished. What was finished? In other words, what he said 2,000 years ago, what does it have to do with you and me in 2020? First of all, what he said was the power of Satan was finished. The Bible says everyone is under the power of the devil or Satan. One of the most critical events that took place everyone should know about is the appearance of Satan. The fallen angel, also known as the great dragon, the ancient serpent, or the devil, rebelled against God and deceived first man and woman. Since then, he has been leading entire planet astray ever since. His message was very simple. You will be like God. In other words, you don't really need God in your life. You'll be just fine living happily without God. You see by the devil, entire human race have been following the ruler Okay, camera, okay, good. Deceived by the devil, the entire human race have been following the ruler of the kingdom of the air and the ways of this world. So everybody following where everybody's going and worshiping something that is other than God without knowing whom they are following. The devil has been stealing, killing, and destroying. That's why there are so much sufferings, including spiritual, mental, and physical sufferings everywhere. Disasters and calamities have become a permanent part of our lives. No governments can take on these problems even today. Mankind created by image of God has been displaced under the control of the devil. No one has been proven powerful enough to escape from his control. Compelled by his love, great love for us, God sent the true king to crush the power of the devil and to destroy what God, what the devil had done to us. The Bible says that the reason the Son of God appeared would destroy the devil's work. When you believe in this true king who came for you, you will be eternally set free from the hands of Satan. The power of Satan was finished on the cross. What else was finished? The power of sin. Many people think sin is something they did. They believe they suffer because of something they did wrong. 
But the Bible states that sin is the displacement from God. It's a position. Eternal separation from God. It's not because what they did. It's because where they are. All have sinned, Bible says, fall short of the glory of God. Man is supposed to be supposed to be with God in the glory of God has been subject to under the curse of sin. It's the wrong place they're in. This is original sin everyone is born with. You and I didn't do it. We just born into this. So sin is a state, it's a condition. It's not something you do. That's why repentance is not enough. People trying to correct themselves, but that's not enough. Nothing we do can undo original sin and the sins of our fathers. Because of this sin, death entered everyone's life. If you steal something, you can make it up for it. But this original sin, you have to die for it. This is a state of sin everyone is bound to live in. Because of this sin, no one can escape from the curses and disasters it brings. Our sins require the death of a sinless person who is not under the power of original sin. This is why God sent the true priest to give his own life to take away the power of sin from us. He said, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. In other words, he had to pay for the price of sin by his own death. When you believe this true priest God sent, you will be completely set free from the law of sin and death. The power of sin will not overcome you any longer. No more curses, no more guilt and shame in your life forever. That's why he said it's finished. The power of sin has been broken. What was finished? The power of hell. What is hell and where is hell? This is where there is no mercy of God. When people live without acknowledging the grace and mercy of God, they are living in hell. It doesn't matter where they live. They may live in a mansion, driving the nicest car. They are living in hell. They think they need God's mercy and God's grace. That's where hell is. But when they leave this planet, they will end up in physical hell. To get out of this, people think they, if they are sincere uh, somehow, they can get out of this mess. Some people think they can follow religion and keep all the rules religion requires. But no religion is powerful enough to rescue anyone from the background of hell. The power of Satan, the power of sin, and the power of hell. This is where everybody's under. That's why in the entire human history, there's so many efforts to bring us back to somewhere nicer, somewhere ideal. Nobody succeeded. Compelled by his great love for us, God paved on his own a new and living way to bring, bring us back to him through the true prophet. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to Father except through me. You and I have 
three unsolvable problems. Everyone has it. Satan, sin, and hell. God has provided his solution, the only solution to our unsolvable problems by sending his son as a true king, as a true priest, as a true prophet. All three positions of the king, priest, and prophet has something in common. In ancient days, they were all anointed by God, by oil. That's what it means. To set us free from the power of sin and power of Satan, sin and hell, God sent his son as the anointed one or the Christ. The innocent man who died on the cross was that Christ, the anointed one. His name was Jesus, which means the savior. He was born in Bethlehem and lived about 33 years. Throughout his life, he proved that he was the Christ by fulfilling all the prophecies concerning the Christ. His birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, all these things. As, as most critical evidence of being the Christ, he rose again from the dead in three days. I don't follow any other religious leaders, Muhammad and all these famous people. The reason is very simple. Nobody was able to prove that he was the Christ. How do I know that? Their body is still in their tomb. But Jesus' tomb is still empty. When you believe that Jesus is the Christ, you will be born of God into his family. No more power of Satan. No more power of sin, no more power of hell will control you. And God will give you the right to become his children when you believe and accept his knocking at the door of your heart. I stand at the door and knock, he says. If anyone hears my voice, opens the door, I will come in to him. This is the promise of the Christ who broke the power of Satan, sin, and hell. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Christ and believe in him in your heart, you will be saved tonight. But how do you believe in him? How do you accept him? You simply accept Jesus as your Savior and your Christ into your heart by prayer. If you'd like to do that, why don't you follow after me? I'm going to pray with you. So I'm going to say a few uh, words and you can follow after me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ the son of the living God. You are the true king who destroy the devil's work. You are the true priest who broke the power of sin. You are the true prophet who paved the new and living way back to God. I now open my heart and receive you as my Savior, as my Christ. Thank you for making me your child. Thank you for sending me your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God lives in you. He will guide you 
and he will empower you. So you don't have to worry about your life anymore. He has set you free from the law of sin and death. So you don't have to live in your past anymore, your guilt and shame. God doesn't really remember. You are forgiven. God has given you authority as a child of God. If you pray in Jesus' name from tonight, God will listen to your prayer and he'll answer you whenever you pray in Jesus' name. Wherever you go, God will surround you with his angel of God. And you will live this life as a citizen of heaven. Even though you live on earth, you have full access, everything in heaven that has been given to you right now when you believe in Jesus as the Christ. Whatever you do, you're going to live for the goal and purpose God has for you. That is saving lives. There are so many people out there in your families, in your dorm rooms, in your school, in your workplaces. They are still searching and wandering without knowing that Jesus is the Christ. And God will place you as Christ's witnesses for the rest of your life. So Christian life is very simple. Enjoy rest in Christ. Enjoying the salvation, the blessing of salvation in your life, who you are and what you have. And living for the gospel. Amen.